Hello, good morning, everyone. I think now we are good shape to start our first webinar about open finance and open banking. Uh, allow me first to announce that we are going to start our session, uh, which is going to last for one hour and 30 minutes from your time. Um, our session is about open finance and open banking. The open finance and open banking arises from several factors. Highlight that that highlights the limitation and inefficiencies of financial traditional financial systems. In our webinar, we'll explore opportunities and regulatory challenges. In this web virtual gathering, we will have a distinguished guests and speakers from local and international experience to deep dive into the dynamic landscape of the open finance and its implications for the financial industry in Jordan and the region. Our webinar will explore the concept of open finance and the potential of transforming the way for financial services, how it's accessed and delivered. Our experts and panelists will shed the lights on the opportunities presented in open finance, promoting the financial services, financial inclusion, innovation, and fostering collaboration among the stakeholders. Also, among our panelists, we have a regulators, a regulatory, a regulator, regulatory expert that would provide a valuable insights into a challenge faced during by regulator in adapting this open finance into the ecosystem of the financial industry. Balancing between consumer protection, data privacy, and fostering innovation to the financial industry. Our interactive session actually it's going to, to be in three parts. First part presentation from our panelists and the speakers and their insights about open and their experiences in, in financial in the open finance industry and open banking industry. And followed would you, during that session we will have or after just after that session we'll have we are running some polls question to get your insight to as an audience as an experience experts in the field practitioners to better understand the landscape and the ecosystem of the open finance and open banking. Before moving to the next speaker and the next panelist, we will have to, we will run that polls regarding the topic that being presented. Also, after the presentations being presented from our panelists, we will run the Q&A and asking some questions to clarify some topics, some information about their presentation before giving the floor and the virtual stage to our audience to start to ask and to give their insights about open finance and open banking experience in Jordan and the region. But before going to that depth, actually allow me first to give to welcome our guests from GIZ and Central Bank of Jordan, Mrs. Catherine, the team head of Digitals, GIZ Jordan. So I will give the virtual stage for her to give a welcoming remark to start our session formally. The floor is yours, Catherine. Thank you. So uh, thank you very much for participating. I see familiar names, uh, but I, we also have new guests. So it's really uh, great to have you all virtually here today. My special thanks go, of course, to the speakers, the experts of the topic, open banking and finance, and I'm already looking forward to uh, to get more insights. Digital in collaboration with Central Bank of Jordan is continuing the digital financial services dialogues. After 15 high-level dialogues, uh, mostly in person, we are now starting this series of online which, uh, webinars, which will be consistent of six sessions starting today till mid of August. So each webinar is a knowledge sharing session on specific innovative topic 
And so please keep your eye up on the upcoming invitations and feel free to share it. Because, uh, I mean, knowledge is only uh, so as good as the people who uh, participate. And uh, that's what uh, the idea is, to make sure that as many people as possible can participate in this knowledge exchange uh, series. And uh, so we will have always speakers from Jordan, but also regional and sometimes international, depending on the topic, because we want to give you the, the best experts, of course. And um, the topics will be today, so open banking and finance. And then the next one will be content management and authentication, which is a topic definitely to my heart because I worked on mobile identity for a long time. And then digital financial inclusion for vulnerable groups, which is, of course, a very important topic also for digital dances. But we also want to look outside of Jordan to see what we can learn. Digital lending and savings. I think this is a topic which is uh, like uh, came up already last year. And a lot of uh, people are thinking what kind of services we, uh, we can develop. So I'm already looking forward to that. And then central bank digital currency. I mean, this, everyone is always uh, talk, talking about Bitcoins and so on. So we will also talk about it. And we will talk about green finance because, I mean, we <laughs> everyone in Jordan experienced that the summer came very late. And uh, in other parts of uh, uh, of Europe, uh, like the summer came super early. So I think it's good that we talk about green finance. So our appreciation also goes to our partner, Apex Consulting, for organizing this because without them, this wouldn't happen. So thank you all. Thank and you. I hand thank back you. over to Seat. Thank you, thank you, Catherine. Thank you for your uh, valuable, actually, insights and nice words. Uh, thank you again to remind us, actually, about the series of the webinars that we will have uh, within the coming two months, actually, a uh, month and a half. We will run another five uh, webinars related to the fintech and digital in general. Um, before moving, actually, this session we couldn't happen without the presence of uh, the regulators with the central bank. So allow me to give the virtual stage also to Mr. Amr Ahmed. He is the head of financial inclusion at the central the unit at the Central Bank of Jordan. So the, the stage is yours, uh, Amr. Uh, thank you, Ziad. Uh, thank you for uh, setting the stage as well for this very interesting uh, uh, webinar. And thank you, Catherine, for your uh, insightful words. Uh, first of all, I'd like to emphasize uh, the importance of these sessions. It's it's uh, a fruit of our collaboration with GIZ. It's this di di digital sales program that has been ongoing since, since uh, 2015 and the DFS dialogue uh, has been held 15 times uh, uh, physically and now this series of webinars will continue as my colleagues just mentioned uh, but yet they're uh, tackling really important uh, and insightful uh, topics and up-to-date topics. Uh, first of all we're as everyone knows, I'd like to thank everyone for participating. I see familiar faces, but I'm happy to see uh, new faces as well. Um, we are currently uh, forming the National Financial Inclusion Strategy, and we emphasize this time more on digital financial inclusion. We want to leverage on, on the digital infrastructure that we've been all working on in terms of providing more access, affordable services for everyone. I think today's session is really interesting, open finance, That's and that it's a catalyst for all for everyone in the financial sector to develop more innovative uh, solutions and products as well. Uh, I don't want to hold you from enjoying the uh, the uh, the session with the fantastic uh, moderator Ziad and thanks uh, Finn Abdullah and Baraa for uh, participating and uh, Catherine uh, I'm really excited for, for the green finance as well and we all been seeing the fluctuation in the weather here yet we've been happy because it's been raining so so I don't know sometimes it's bad somewhere but good some other places. So I'll let you enjoy this uh, this you. session and looking forward for all this session. Please go ahead. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, 
Thank you, Ahmad, for your insights. And um, uh, allow me first before to move to our uh, our first panelist and guest speaker, just to remind everyone that we have two channels in our webinar session that you could choose directly translation to Arabic or to English, vice versa. So you could go to the three dots in your MS Teams up right corner and choose the language that you would like to hear uh, up uh, in. So it's a, there are two options, English and Arabic. So so that to make sure that everyone will get the best of the knowledge that you're going to share within the coming one hour and 20 minutes for now. So actually, allow me first to introduce our guest and speaker, our first panelist actually, Mr. Fenn. Fenn, he is the digitization and payment transaction expert at the German Saving Bank Association. He has more than 16 years of experience in the field of the fintech and banking, capital markets, payments law, and consumer protection law. So he has the full background of the background of the needed experience in the open, fan, open finance and open banking. He is now an uh, in-house lawyer for the German Saving Association, Bank Association. He's providing us his services actually to more than 400 bank saving banks in, cons in credit, consumer credit law, payment services law, and consumer protection law. And he's representing German Saving Bank Association in several uh, conferences and activities in the region in Europe and internationally. So allow me for, allow me to uh, welcome Mr. Fenn and give him, inviting him to the virtual stage to give and to shed the light and uh, share his insights about open banking finance experience in this virtual space. So the stage is yours, Fenn. And you have the coming 15 minutes is yours. Thank you, Fen, in advance. Thank you so much, uh, Ziad, for the very well welcome. Um, hello, everyone from Berlin, Germany. I think uh, green financing is really important because we've seen some very hot uh, climate in Germany at the moment. So I think uh, I will be joining that webinar as well. But um, I don't want to take up too much time. Um, Let's jump right into my presentation that I will share right now. I hope it'll work. Ben, this, this didn't work yet. Um, I can support you sharing my screen and uh, then you tell me when to click further. Okay, sure. Let's go like that. I mean, thank you, Branko. Thank you, Branko. Take up too much time here. Yeah. One second. Um, okay. Thanks. All right. Um, so if you could jump to uh, the, the next slide, actually, um, I'm going to talk about concepts of open finance and their impact on financial inclusion. And I want to briefly touch up on the following topics, evolution of open finance objectives, the key elements of an ecosystem, international concepts, use cases, the impact on financial inclusions, and obviously, since being from Germany, Europe, uh, the learnings from the European perspective. Next slide, please. So where did, did it all start or where are we coming from? Uh, what you're seeing here on the screen is the traditional banking relationship. Obviously, it's in between two um, parties of a contract. Um, and uh, you see the consumer and you see the bank, which offers a variety of uh, financial services, such as lending, um, payments, wealth management, investment, et cetera. Next slide, please. The first step in the evolution towards open finance then was open banking. 
I think we've seen two drivers for that. First of all, it was the um, GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, which gave the consumer a data portability right. So that means as a consumer, I have the power to um, tell my contractual partner to shift data from A to B. The problem was, however, that there was no standardization for that. So it was a right just written on paper, but it wasn't worth anything in practical. Uh, but then we saw the Payment Services Directive 2, um, the strong open banking regulation in Europe, which made it mandatory for banks to open up the payment accounts and allow third party providers such as fintechs um, to gain access to the data of the bank with regard to payment accounts. Next slide, please. So, and then of course, the next um, natural evolutionary step is to go beyond payment use cases. As I mentioned, the, the Payment Service Directive 2 was aiming at the payment accounts. And now we see um, the opening for all the other financial services which are provided by a bank. Next slide. Um, as I mentioned before, a lot of the drivers towards open finance have been regulatory, but ob obviously, this wouldn't been um, possible without the enabling technologies, um, just to name a few, uh, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and big data, but mostly and most important, the application programming interface, the, the APIs, um, because without these technologies, we wouldn't be able to share the data in, in real time and in a secure environment, something that I think Abdallah will be um, the expert to talk on. Next slide, please. Then moving on to the objectives of open finance, as I mentioned before, it's first of all, customer empowerment. So to make sure the customer has the right um, to shift his data from A to B, um, we see an enhancing in competition, um, also often referred to as disruption in the FinTech community, which means that the incumbents, the banks are now facing other players in the market, smaller players, more specialized players that offer the same services as they do to a large community. And the third objective is facilitating innovation because this might be a cliche, but in general, if you're a, a big bank, you do not maybe have the pressure to innovate that much, um, but you are now uh, seeing smaller um, players in the market that um, come up with innovative services. Next slide, please. So what are the key elements of an open finance ecosystem? Um, it doesn't matter if you're talking from a regulatory perspective or from a market um, driven perspective, you have to make sure that you have consent about uh, these elements that, I, that I'm addressing here. So first of all, it's data accessibility. I mean, that's an obvious one. Um, you need data to build data-driven business cases. Um, and you can either get access to that data via contract or if it's mandatory um, by law. Um, but also it's important that the, the data availability comes from different sectors. Uh, what we're seeing is that, um, as, at least in the European Union, but also in other countries around the world, that we see not only an open finance strategy, but we see an open data strategy, meaning that, for example, governmental data, but also cross sectoral data um, is being open to players in the market in order to um, bring innovative financial services. Um, the next aspect is data standardization. That's also obvious. I talked about this with the GDPR um, right to data portability. If there's no standardization, then it doesn't help me um, to build use cases from different access to different banks um, that could provide me the data in different forms. And also uh, with the API, uh, you need a certain level of standardization, but there's a huge debate on the degree of standardization, because if you choose a too high standardization, it might um, enlarge the threshold for smaller players to enter the market because it's a very costly aspect. So you have to have 
uh, from a regulatory perspective, I think focus on establishing a framework that incentivize high quality APIs and also define minimum standards for security, for example, and also um, for performance. Um, then I think it's crucial to have a cost of data access um, debate. Uh, what we've seen in Europe is that the Permanent Services, Services Directive 2 gave access to the data of the banks for free, uh, which is, I think, very uncommon because if you look at the liberalization of other markets, for example, the energy market or the train market, you have this principle that the one that maintains the infrastructure <clears throat> is able to uh, recover his costs for that. So I think uh, you have to have a debate on a fair share of costs between the market players and uh, personally, and also that was um, the result of a European expert group. I think it's a fair share if, uh, as mentioned before, the data holder, so in this case, the banks um, can, um, can uh, reallocate their costs and can also uh, have a reasonable margin of profit on top of that in order to build business cases themselves. Um, another element is data protection and consumer protection. That's also a very obviously uh, one because I don't think anywhere else than in the financial data industry, trust is such an important aspect. So if you don't have the trust of the consumers to enter into relationships with the third party providers due to a lack of data protection or information, you won't see a flourishing market. And uh, at least uh, we have to talk about liability, which is also a huge aspect. You have to have very clear um, rights and obligations of the parties involved. So everyone knows who is liable in case of data misusage uh, or other um, errors that run within the sharing or generating or processing of data. Next slide, please. Here, I just wanted to highlight real quickly that we see different approaches um, within the open um, finance, com finance community. This is taken from an OECD report uh, of, of 2023, and um, it just highlights that we do see um, regulatory approaches, for example, in Europe, Australia, and Brazil, um, and we do see market-driven approaches in Singapore, China, and the US. However, I, since this is a very um, early stage of the development of the market, we do not have clear data yet on which approach is more favorable um, to a flourishing market. I think, and I will come back on that later, it's also always a matter of the culture of the market um, and the, the, the regulatory um, acceptance and so on and so forth. So I don't think there's a general answer to that worldwide. Next slide, please. This is just a quick highlight on the different approaches that have been taken worldwide, taken from a Gartner um, report of 2022. Uh, as you see, the, the, the countries are just highlighted. Next slide, please. So uh, what are the, the use cases uh, we see? Well, obviously, we see payment use cases because they're coming from open banking and we already have in place a lot of um, um, open banking regulatory frameworks. Uh, there we see um, the payment initiation services uh, where a third party provider can initiate a payment, um, which is especially often used in e-commerce. Uh, we see the account information services um, and in general um, aggregating of information. Um, this is sort of like the old world um, the new world, I think a very interesting use case will be alternative lending. Um, and I uh, differentiated it between um, SME financing, mortgages, and credit worthiness assessment, but they all have similar aspects in common. Um, as we know, SME financing is often a problem because the, the, for, from a lender perspective, 
it's tough to make the creditworthiness assessment with SMEs. You have the lack of information. Um, so it ends up in uh, more transactional costs and worse conditions for SMEs. Um, and so this is where the, the open data uh, really has its benefits. Um, and it's also highlighting why it's so important to not only have an open finance framework, but have an open data framework and have cross-sectoral and govern governmental uh, data access. Because with the SME, for example, it's, it's often already as at the first stage a problem to know who are you dealing with on the other side. So you would need access, for example, to governmental data more quicker, um, for example, tax history, um, but also other um, registry of the uh, company, uh, etc. cetera. Um, and if you would have access to those um, more quickly and more precisely, you could even add um, real-time data from um, their B2B businesses, their sales, et cetera, if you could have all these combined in um, analyzing the SME, you could give them much better um, loans or give them a loan in the first place as a lot of SMEs have trouble um, uh, finding someone uh, to finance their investments. Um, and also, if you look at this from a consumer perspective, um, for example, if you would give access to creditworthiness assessment data, it would help switching from loans, uh, from one loan to another, for example, because if I'm a, a loan broker and I have access or via the consent of the consumer access um, to his ongoing loan, I can then obviously um, uh, compare that to other loans in the market at the moment. So I think that's a very interesting use case. Other use cases involve financial management account aggregation that could be on investment data, but could also be an overall information about the data uh, lying without within the bank. You have insure tech, which is most of the time rather a comparison use case where you analyze uh, the insurance situation of the consumer at the status quo and then um, compare it to other market uh, insurance contracts out there. The in-vehicle data is sort of linked to the insure tech um, use case. It means that you can have um, real-time transmission of the data from within the car to, for example, banks or insurance companies, and they can give much better um, contracts uh, of insurance. It also has a very nice societal um, effect because you can uh, see uh, where heavy traffic um, is, is going on and, and other uh, things that the car uh, is informing you about. Next slide, please. So the impact on financial inclusion, I think it's also quite obvious. Um, you have a lot of more access to financial services, some that are in the past maybe limited to um, a, a what? Excuse me. And um, something That's that is fine. maybe. Um, oh yeah. See it? No. <clears throat> Go ahead. Please, please continue. I think we okay, have some intent to win. So um, the impact is that you have more financial services um, uh, accessible to the clients who usually maybe are limited to a um, bank client uh, contractual relationship and are pricier. We know the effects of competition to lower costs and to have more tailored financial products to the individual. <clears throat> we also think it might mitigate risk of over indebtedness because as I mentioned, we see a lot of tools that give oversight of all the financial um, obligations I have as a consumer. If they're all put together in a sort of dashboard um, on, my, um, on my front end, using, for example, a, an application on my, on my smartphone, uh, I might have a better overview on where I'm heading. And in that regard, it also simplifies, this is actually an um, example from Australia, it simplifies the counseling of consumers in crucial financial situations because 
what a counselor usually is facing is the problem that again he doesn't even know what the consumer is um, as has obligations maybe from different uh, financial institutions or from, from different financial services providers. Next slide, please. So what are the learnings from the EU perspective? Um, I think the guidance by the regulator is very helpful. We see that you have to have um, a stable uh, environment um, and, and rights and obligations. But it's also very uh, crucial to have co coherence with other legislation. We've seen a lot of problems between GDPR and Payment Services Directive 2, which might have been the case because both were issued at the same time coming in 2015 to 2016. So we felt that the different departments of the European Commission didn't talk to each other and it was very confusing once we had that on the table. <coughs> Sorry. Um, as I mentioned before, open finance should always be embedded in an open data strategy because that's where it flourishes the most. If you can also use non-financial data to build your business case, you should install a fair remuneration model for all stakeholders. I also mentioned that as part of the key elements for the ecosystem. And I think you should leave room for a market-driven approach. approach. This is something we're seeing in Europe right now. So we had the Payment Services Directive 2. And as I mentioned before, banks weren't allowed to take a fee when they were um, opening up the data. But then Payment Services Directive 2 limited the accessibility of data to certain data. So what happened in the market was that a lot of TPPs and banks came together and had um, talks about a a certain scheme, which means actually just a contractual basis where you define the parameters for sharing more data than you're obliged to under PSD2. And within this scheme, you also have, uh, you set up remuneration models, which you think are fair and so on and so forth. And these initiatives we've seen a lot in Europe. However, uh, next slide, please. However, we're now facing regulation um, towards open finance in the EU. Um, just uh, last week or the week before that, we saw the leak of a regulation on a framework for financial data access, <clears throat> which has certain interesting parts to it. For example, it stipulates uh, this dashboard concept that consumers should always have a clear overview on who they give their consent to um, um, have access to their data, which we think is a very good principle. But um, this regulation also states that you are only allowed to take a fee again as a bank if you have a scheme set up with the TPPs to define uh, the parameters for that. And the problem is obviously that as a TPP, um, I don't have any incentive to join the scheme if it means that if I'm not in a scheme, I get the data access for free. Um, so we see uh, that this did not really help uh, the, the market initiatives that have actually flourished well, but weren't done yet. So we fear or, or our um, or my personal um, uh, recommendation would be to have something like an open banking regulation in place, set some parameters, but then also let the market develop um, good, um, good schemes or good decisions uh, by themselves. And that's it from my side. I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, and thank you for your uh insights and uh, knowledge sharing actually about uh, open finance, which is a new uh, topic for the industry, the new uh, uh, approach of providing financial services using financial technology platforms and uh, um, let's say open finance and banking. That would allow, sure, as you just mentioned, maybe one of the impacts uh, that financial inclusion uh, products, uh, innovation and uh, all of these uh, 
positive, let's say, insights uh, from that experience. Uh, before moving to our next speaker, actually, and our guest, uh, uh, if you have questions to Fen and uh, to his presentation, please uh, uh, keep it until the end, and we will give the floor for everyone to share and to to ask the questions uh, regarding this presentation. Uh, first, uh, also, I would like to remind uh, everyone who attending our audience that there is a channel of translation Arabic and English. Maybe my colleague Dua, if she can add the link for the PowerPoint that shows how you can use the translation channels in Arabic and English. Uh, so you can see now in the chat, uh, uh, Dua is going to share the link for the PowerPoint if you are not familiar with. Again, the three dots above in the part, task part of the Microsoft Teams. You can see three dots from there. You can change the language that you would prefer, Arabic or English. So um, now is the time to run uh, some polls, let's say, polls for the audience to exchange their knowledge and their insights about the new topic of open finance and open banking knowledge. Actually, to be frankly, before, let's say, three, four months, I never been uh, even, even heard about open finance. I, we usually use fintech, financial technology, and then we have a new terminology called open finance. So this is the, the, the let's say, the chance for everyone to know more from experts and uh, speakers that their knowledge and regulators actually, how it's going to happen and what would be the impact. Where's the consumer protection, data privacy and uh, services that could transform the financial industry. We will run now some uh, polls, let's say. I will ask my colleague to run the first one. Actually, within a minute, we need your answer. So uh, in the chat, uh, you can see the question uh, and you can view the poll directly. So you can choose. We have like 30, 40 seconds. I encourage everyone to exchange and to give his opinion, actually, which potential benefit of open finance interests you the most as a practitioner, as a regulator, as a user, as a beneficiary, as with this regard, your experience is or which field you are in or from. So I encourage everyone because that would give us an insight also for us and for everyone more in depth, let's say, uh, valuable information for us. Now we can move. Do we have a good answers? Uh, 13 responses, 15 so far. I encourage everyone to Dua, did you share the link? Because they are asking upon the link. Dua. We have 25 responses so far. I encourage everyone to exchange his knowledge and experience, actually, and expectation. Not necessarily that you are already used this service, but at least your expectation about having such open finance banking services in your country. 30 now. OK, uh, let's uh, give the chance for the next poll. Actually. You can move to the next one. We can move to the next poll. I will use mine, so next, I will go to the next. Which element do you consider to be the most crucial for the success of open finance ecosystem?
We still have that third one. If you can help me with that third one, polls. Brian Cole. So we had, um, to my knowledge, all three have been launched. That they need to be clicked further by the participants, and the results should be in the chat available. Okay, now, so uh, let's move to our uh, next uh, speaker and guest, actually, Mr. Abdullah Tuiqat. He is from Jordan Payment Clearing Company, Jobad. Uh, Abdullah, Mr. Abdullah, he has, uh, he's an, uh, a solution architect, actually, and head of development uh, in development at Jobad, Jordan, uh, with expertise, actually, in payment technology domain. He has an extensive experience in this designing and implementing innovative IT solution for payment processes, enhance security and improve operational efficiency. Uh, Abdullah has a, a deep understanding of the financial industry, in the trusty trend, emerging technology and, and financial industry in general. Allow me to uh, invite uh, Mr. Abdullah uh to take the virtual stage and share with us his insights and knowledge in open finance and open banking thank you abdullah the stage is thank yours. you thank you so much thank you for having me here today let me just share my screen and then we can start um I will go directly to the presentation and just to keep everything linked together. Uh, I'm going to talk uh, today about the uh, Jordanian experience in uh, building an ecosystem or a uh, infrastructure for the uh, open finance services and open banking, open finance uh, uh, APIs and services. Um, after we uh, discussed, let's say, the definition of open banking, open finance, the key elements and all of that use cases. Um, we can see here the journey, how uh, uh, everything just went here in Jordan in a fast pace because we have started our journey, let's say, uh, with the open finance, open, open banking early here in Jordan. To, to come later is um, uh, better than not to come ever. But, uh, as we all know, there is more than uh, 70 implementations um, uh, globally, um, and we try to uh, learn from uh, those uh, implementations globally just to understand uh, the risks, uh, 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 boundaries, or um, uh, the uh, 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 benefits from implementing the open banking, open finance here in Jordan. So everything just started with the vision of economic modernization, um, then uh, to the instructions for the to regulate the open finances, uh, finance uh, services was issued by Central Bank of Jordan. Then we uh, launched together with the Central Bank of Jordan, the joint thank you, Peter and um, Joe uh, Rigbox. Uh, after that, we have uh, started uh, the journey with the uh, with the collaboration with the GIZ and join as as a financial technology incubator. Uh, we and we have launched our first hackathon tackling the MSME's uh, financial inclusion problem and uh, credit facilities access. Um, and we already launched our, our uh, task force here in Jordan with a collaboration with seven different banks and Central Bank of Jordan to outline, let's say, and uh, 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 all the design principles for our Jordan Open Finance specifications. So wh what I will gonna describe um, now is our journey here in Jordan, how we tackled the open banking, open finance um, implementation. As we, as we have checked in uh, 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 the first presentations, there is multiple initiatives globally with the regulations. Um, um, some of them focuses on the open banking related to payments and accounts specifically. And we have some limitations tackling the open finance, which is beyond the payments with uh, the value added services uh, uh, introduced to the customers with the specialized, let's say, 
products to the customer uh, and personalized products. Um, uh, we are, uh, we are, I'm actually mentioning that because in Jordan we have, let's say, some sort of unique position. As the initiatives and the regulations globally, uh, uh, some of them are regulatory driven and the, uh, the other half is industry driven or market driven. But here in Jordan, our, the Central Bank of Jordan uh, issued the legislation uh, without mandating the APIs, the use cases, the, the specifications for the open banking, open finance, and gave that to the market to decide how to implement which will affect actually the, the implementations uh, implementation here in Jordan and make it faster and make it better for the banks uh, uh, as it's being uh, 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 designed by the banks. Uh, uh, but in, in some cases, while uh, 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 for, for, for the legislations here in Jordan, we might face some sort of a regulatory challenge uh, as the legislations must be keep updated. For now, actually, we are seeing the new draft for the BSD3 um, uh, will be launched soon. Now it's a draft and it will be launched soon. So the regulations must keep updated to go with uh, 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 different types of financial institutions, new services, new technology, and to meet their requirements uh, from a regulatory perspective. And uh, it should be taken gradually just to make sure that everything will go smooth and, and secure. Our ultimate goal here in Jordan is, is to create an inclusive open finance uh, ecosystem. Everything must start with assessment, then the inclusion criteria, regulatory guidelines, which is we, we have the first, let's say, uh, um, part of it, then it should be updated and go bigger. The technical specifications, uh, we as a JOPAC uh, um, and join with the participants, as I said, seven different banks here in Jordan and the Central Bank of Jordan, we have started and launched our task force to build the technical specifications, the guidance and support, will, which will be uh, um, sub, uh, uh, provided by JOIN as a incubator and the uh, uh, JORIC box. And we have the monitoring enforcement and updates, which is the part will be made by the JORIC box as a regulatory side box here in Jordan. So this is the, our ultimate goal to create that uh, ecosystem to to push the uh, to achieve all the goals uh, uh, from the open banking, open finance. Okay. Usually and globally, uh, the market infrastructure for the open finance uh, will be created by three different pillars. Let's say the third part, third party management, TPP management, and the standards and the value added services to to reach that point to achieve the open finance, let's say, uh, the, we, the, there must be a focus on the value added services and the main building blocks are the open ba open banking as, as a services. Because the, the, the building block for the finance at the end will be the payments and the accounts. But from there we can uh, take it one step further by adding all those va uh, value added services for the customers, the uh, uh, personalized uh, uh, products and services to achieve the open finance uh, uh, concept. Here in Jordan, we see it as a third party management, consent management standards, and the uh, support from Jorik Box. For the third party management, uh, uh, we will take advantage from Join as, as a sandbox, as Join includes uh, uh, a wide variety of global standards from uh, tech, as a technical standards. And and we will also take advantage from a job pack position as aggregator in the market, um, uh, or, or the third party providers can be managed by the bank. So there's uh, the freedom for the con connectivity and the methodology for the connectivity here in Jordan. For the consent management, we are discussing that currently with with the task force members here in Jordan. But we have checked the um, key, consent, key uh, consent key elements as it should be derived from the, the uh, rights for the customer and the data access rights. And we have checked the industry standards as well as to OpenID Connect and some more advanced uh, uh, standards. And we have checked also the industry specific standards, which is the upgraded version of the industry standards with some uh, uh, um, security enhancements to achieve the, the goal from, from that. For the um, standardization of the services, here in Jordan, we have we have we are finalizing the the design principles uh, for the uh, API standardization standardizations, 
and we will check that in the next slides. And we have also the Jer uh, Jorik box, which is our partner here in in um, join uh, as a as an incubator uh, for the startups and the fintech technology in general. Our steps uh, here in Jordan, we have started uh, with the design principles, then the consent management uh, in parallel with the open API specifications. Then we will move forward to the phased implementation uh, with our first category, let's say, which is the publicly accessible data, just uh, uh, to take it as a learning uh, process and uh, building the capacity here in Jordan for the for impl implementing services and implementing the open banking, open finance services in, in Jordan. For our design principles, actually, once we check the and we have checked the most of the implementations globally, um, uh, we tried to find the right balance between uh, customer first, developer first, and infrastructure or the banks first. So to find that uh, uh, the the balance point between the three different uh, 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 stakeholders in the open finance uh, uh, platforms or uh, markets. Uh, we have decided to to set down the design principles for the Jordan Open Finance Services specifications and to be our guidelines in in key building the the uh, services in the coming future. So we have started with collaboration with the market, and that's why we have we need the task force here in Jordan. So we have launched the task force uh, uh, to go with uh, uh, to build the technical specifications for our. Um, Open finance services, then the RESTful API, which is uh, aligned with the most or even all the um, global standards for implementing open banking, open finance uh, specifications. Then we have the interoperability, which is one of uh, our crucial uh, 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 part of the building the uh, infrastructure for the open finance here in Jordan. We have tackled that problem by setting the guidelines for building tech technical and semantic interoperability and we have the business interoperability not locally even jordan and we have talked also on a global level and that's why we have checked most of the implementations globally to make sure that we can uh, be interoperable with the implementations uh, globally and make it easier for the third party providers to serve their customers from jordan and even to serve them uh, uh, globally uh, originally then we have the continuous implementation, uh, continuous development, um, uh, which will keep providing the customer. Which here we are focusing on the customer first to keep providing customers with the latest features and services, and keep updating the services to meet their uh, uh, requirements uh, as users. We have the future proof and extensible design. Uh, here in Jordan, we have tackled the technical specifications in an. Uh, in, in a different way from other specifications globally. So, for example, in the UK implementation, we can see the linearized data objects. Uh, here in Jordan, we prefer to take it as, as a repository method, complex types, simple types, and flexible data objects just to minimize the number of changes or the headache on the developers. So, we in this pillar, we have made the uh, developers and TPPs first to help them in their development journey for the services and the products. Then we have the utilization of Jordan uh, Jordanian financial, financial market specifications. We have checked most of the um, um, payment specifications, uh, non-payment specifications, local standards, uh, and we focused uh, uh, on making the open finance, uh, open banking specification, spe specifications as, as flexible uh, as we can, just to minimize the development efforts even on the bank sites. So in this pillar we have have me as first and the banks here in Jordan uh, uh, as first to minimize the efforts from their side. Then we have the security first. Then we have tackled the uh, consent management problem. As I said, we have checked the industry standards and the industry specific standards, the difference between multiple specifications and standards globally uh, and what is the best practice to adapt from the global specifications to uh, uh, implement the consent management here in Jordan. And and uh, that's why we will take it as a phased implementation here in Jordan just to make sure that we have we are uh, implementing 
the uh, required uh, services and building the infrastructure in the uh, in a best man. Um, now I'm going to talk a little bit about the consent management and the key elements for uh, uh, consent management uh, for, for the data protection for the customers specifically and uh, uh, their protection. So most of the uh, uh, key elements for the consent management globally are derived from the data uh, access rights and data privacy rights. That's why we, we see uh, multiple elements in the life cycle of the consent itself. Uh, the acquisition of the consent, the generality of the consent, uh, what type of data that you can access, how you can access it, the life cycle even for the, the consent, um, uh, the revocation and withdrawal of the consents, auditing, reporting, privacy, and all of that. So um, here in Jordan, uh, the, the government just issued the draft for the data privacy. This is, was our main focus while uh, setting up the key management, uh, the, sorry, consent management key elements and its life cycle and how we can build the uh, per correct uh, uh, consent management life cycle for our customers here in Jordan um, and to make it uh, as much as we can user friendly for them uh, uh, for the customers here in Jordan. This is an additional slide to, to describe what we have checked globally and the difference between the industry standards and industry specific standards. Globally, we have the OAuth 2, which is the main building block or the core a protocol globally for the consent management. And we have the upgraded, upgraded version on top of the OAuth 2, OpenID Connect, and the latest, which is the, uh, the, the latest upgrade for the OAuth 2 protocol, which is VNAB, and we are checking that just to make our uh, platforms and sorry, our infrastructure as uh, 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 technically future proof as much as we can. And also we can check the industry specific standards and how the uh, how uh, globally um, uh, enhanced the uh, industry standards. We have the FDX, which is the implementation over USA and Canada. We have financial grade API, which is security enhancements over the OAuth 2 protocol. We have the Berlin Group Next Gen PSD2, which is uh, uh, in, in EU, and we have UK Open Banking Implementation Entity guidelines for the um, consent management and the customer journey while granting the consent for the TPPs. What we have checked, actually here in Jordan, we have checked most of the implementations globally. So for example, we have checked UK standards, Berlin Group Next Gen. We have checked the Open Banking Project, one of the biggest projects globally. We have uh, checked uh, multiple uh, bank-specific uh, APIs, such as Danske Bank. We have checked the uh, Monetary Authority in Singapore, which is, uh, and you can see there's a variety on the uh, uh, open banking, open finance specifications that we have checked. Some of them is uh, market driven and some of them is uh, industry driven and the uh, regulatory driven to check the differences and uh, uh, to uh, know how to build our specification here in Jordan and to make it as much as we can tailor to the market needs without reinventing the wheel. Because here in Jordan, we are not trying to build, let's say, our own open banking, open finance spe specifications. If there is a global specification can help us with implementing this uh, uh, project here in Jordan, we will adapt it directly. But in, in most uh, implementations globally, we can see that, uh, for example, the only language will be supported is English, English, English language uh, and no Arabic implementations, let's say. As we as Jordanians, we our mother tongue is Arabic language, so we are trying to find that balance between the global specifications and to make our our specification as much as we can interoperable with them and to be tailored for the market needs and the uh, companies here in Jordan and TPP's needs and uh, to make it tailored to um, uh, the Jordanian market and uh, needs. What else uh, during the journey you need to know? All the, uh, there's a lot of the non-technical uh, regulations and guidelines that must be checked during the journey while working with open banking open finance specifications, for example, the BSD2, and also we need to check now the, the once it's issued the BSD3, we have the Australia's CDR, we have the GDPR as a data privacy law, we, and there is also the local um, uh, rules and regulations, the regulations Central Bank of Jordan, and the regulations from the government, such as the data privacy law. So to build that uh, um, 
a robust, let's say, infrastructure here in Jordan and the ecosystem for the open banking, open finance, all the technicalities and the regulations to support those techni technicalities must be checked to, to achieve the uh, um, goals for, uh, from behind, uh, from building that such, such platforms and uh, ecosystems here in Jordan. We can take as example, I have set that as example. For example, we can see in most of the global uh, um, implementations, the service categorization for the API specifications or APIs. Mostly you can see, we can see three different types of service categories, such as account information services, confirmation of availability funds, and payment initiation services. Those are the mostly defined in most of the regulations. And those categories actually are uh, uh, derived from or listed in the regulations uh, due to different types of uh, uh, requirements from each provider for each service category. Um, here in Jordan, we have decided to go with a different set of categories. We have the account information services. We have the uh, extended services. We have the payment initiation services and we have the uh, facilities, products and services. For the facilities, products and services, those are the publicly accessible data provided by the banks or the financial institutions to the to the uh, TPPs or th third party providers. Which is uh, uh, which will be the first uh, uh, type uh, of uh, categories to be implemented here in Jordan, as we have discussed. Then we will take the account information services, which is the main building block for such uh, ecosystems and uh, infrastructure. The extended services, as 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 we most of us know, we have some sort of uh, previous implementations uh, uh, than the legislation here in Jordan, or even setting up the uh, technical specifications. For example, we have the iBank confirmation service, we have the OTP services, we have the CAS as uh, 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 subsystem or su a service provided by our uh, instant payment solution to as a proxy service for the aliases and uh, 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 payment addresses. So we have a previous implementations that that's why we have decided to create that uh, uh, sort of a category for those services that doesn't uh, goes under the banking products and services directly and con considered as a value added services to support the payments and the accounts uh, uh, provided by the banks. Then we the, we have the payment initiation services which is we, we have left it as an initial uh, a set of implementations for the services to discuss it with the, our task force as the, um, for example, here in Jordan, our systems and switches supports the uh, payment initiations, uh, payment initiation from third party providers directly. So we have to make sure with our stakeholders here in Jordan, how to implement the payment initiation services, uh, what type of added value services must be added to the uh, same category, such as instruction uh, confirmation, pay, uh, credit confirmation services to be added with them. So that's why we have left it to the uh, um, phase two of the implementation from our technical specification. What we are seeing here is the uh, initial set of the APIs that will be uh, implemented here in Jordan. So we, uh, as I told you, as I mentioned, we will start with the publicly accessible data, then we'll go forward with, with the account services such as uh, uh, accounts, balances, beneficiaries, uh, 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 sorry, uh, credit uh, uh, of, uh, confirmation of availability funds. So most of those services will be implemented in our first phase of the implementation. As I told you, to just to take it as a, a um, learning process, building the capacity here in Jordan, prepare the uh, 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 infrastructure from the bank side and the financial uh, uh, financial institutions uh, and to prepare the consent management uh, platforms from their side, then we can move forward uh, to the to the other services such as the account services and the payment initiation services. And that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Abdullah. Thank you, Abdullah. This is a very technical, uh, let's say, uh, insights about uh, open banking, open finance uh, services. Thank you for that uh, valuable information, actually, and in-depth, uh, detailed uh, structure of Jordan experience, let's say, so far in, in this field. Um, uh, actually, 
uh, I, again, back to the topic of uh, open finance, open banking, and the financial technology, and how that would affect the ecosystem of the financial industry in, in Jordan and in the region and in the world. Actually, this is what we are going to to address in our discussion. Uh, thank you again, Abdullah. Uh, I would go now for r running some polls, let's say uh, two polls actually for everyone uh, to, to give the insight. We will share the results uh, of this uh, uh, you, uh, that the audience, let's say, insights also, we will share it within our discussion in the uh, before the approaching the end of this session. But I encourage everyone to reply, to share their insights. What are the biggest problems regarding inclusive finance that open finance should solve? What we are waiting, what we are, let's say, uh, our perspective of having the open finance uh, and how it would impact the inclusive inclusion, financial inclusion in general. We have some options here. So from your perspective and your experience, user or practitioner or banker, or what would be the impact? We still have 10. I would encourage everyone to exchange. We have 30 seconds, 30, 40 seconds left before moving to the next poll. Let's move to the next one, please. We have 28 so far. Number two, Garnick, or I should move it from, or move to the next from my screen, Garnick. It's launched, Siad. Ah, then it shows in my screen the first. So as a technical remark, the uh, polls are being launched at the same time. And once you made a choice and click further, then you have the second question. And if there's a third, then the third one. So they're all launched at the same time and the results will be shown afterwards with yeah. the third speaker. OK. We have uh, 30 responses in total. Before moving to our next panelist, our guest speaker, the regulator side of open finance and open banking. OK. Now I think it's the time to uh, to get the insights actually from our regulator. The uh, perspective of regulator, regulators in general is very important because their responsibility to balance between technology and the new open finance platforms and on the same time data privacy and consumer protection. Allow me to um, to welcome Mrs. Baraa Al Bashaire from the Central Bank of Jordan. Bara has a master's degree in computer engineering and network science, and she works at the central bank for the last eight years. Seven of the seven of those eight years, she was oversight the technical the national plat the, the national payment system field. She has a, a a great experience and extensive experience that enable her to be part of forming the 
She was part of the committee drafting the Central Bank of Jordan Open Finance Regulation. So, Mrs. Bara, uh, uh, allow me to invite her actually to join our virtual platform and welcoming her to exchange her experience and her background during the journey of forming the regulation of open finance in Jordan. The stage, the virtual stage is yours, Farah. Uh, thank you, Ziyad, for your introduction. Uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure today to participate uh, in this interesting and amazing session about open finance. Uh, I will um, introduce the open finance regulation from the Central Bank of Jordan uh, perspective. Uh, let's uh, start with uh, our uh, outline. Please, the next slide. Uh, in our, uh, in my uh, presentation, uh, first of all, I will uh, present uh, our uh, main uh, national objectives uh, behind uh, issuing the open finance uh, regulations, which is the Jordan Economic Modernization Vision. Uh, also, I'll talk about more uh, about our regulations and our instructions uh, in terms of its scope, its um, uh, mandates, uh, its uh, uh, services, and the main pillars in the instructions. Next slide, please. Uh, first of all, uh, issuing uh, the open finance regulation uh, was uh, as an outcome uh, for our national and strategic, uh, strategic, uh, strategic objectives uh, of the Central Bank of Jordan. Our um, national objective was uh, regarding the Jordan economic modernization vision, uh, which have uh, two main pillars uh, about the future of Jordan uh, regarding accelerating growth of economic in Jordan and uh, improving the quality of life for all citizens in Jordan. So this vision, one of its main initiatives and pro, uh, pro priorities was providing an appropriate, regarding the financial sector, is providing an appropriate environment for the advancement of financial technology and uh, their innovation in Jordan. So one of the main action plans to achieve this uh, uh, priority is to, to regulate the open finance uh, services uh, ecosystem in Jordan. So um, that's why we come up with uh, drafting the open finance regulations uh, in Central Bank of Jordan. And we have issued the regulation last year in uh, November. Uh, this uh, issuing of regulation was to achieve this national goal uh, presented by the Jordan Economic Modernization Vision and our strategic objectives in Central Bank of Jordan, such as uh, promoting innovation in the financial sector and the financial inclusion and financial stabilities in the financial sector in Jordan. Uh, for the next slide, I will um, explain uh, the scope of the uh, of these uh, instructions. Uh, this is instruction is applicable to all banks uh, licensed in Jordan and all uh, electronic payment and money transfer companies uh, licensed in the kingdom. Uh, in the next slide, uh, I will talk about uh, the main uh, instruction mandate. Uh, as I told you, this instruction was issued to enable uh, to enable our objectives and to implement our objectives regarding the innovation uh, environment uh, in Jordan and to encourage uh, financial technology uh, and innovation in Jordan. So uh, we have mandated all banks and uh, payment services providers and payment companies uh, to provide open finance services and uh, contract with the third party providers and uh, the fintech to enable the whole ecosystem in the financial technology and innovation sector in Jordan. The next slide, please. So uh, many services uh, and uh, use cases is applied uh, to these instructions, uh, such as account information services, payment initiation services, uh, money services, other services like request to pay, as Finn and uh, Abdullah have mentioned. OK, I move to the main uh, pillars and uh, main uh, uh, points in our instructions. The next slide. Uh, the instructions uh, have uh, done uh, many concerns about open finance regulations. Uh, our objective is uh, to enable the fintech ecosystem and uh, enable the open finance uh, 
uh, trend and technology and not just to restrict um, the, uh, these services. So we have uh, done our best really to uh, have a balance between uh, innovation and fintech and enabling it and um, uh, also um, have um, concerns about consumer protection and financial stabilities and uh, uh, consumer uh, protecting consumer data. So uh, we have uh, done uh, this in many uh, pillar in many pillars and articles in our instructions. For example, uh, the governance uh, we ask the banks and uh, the payment companies. Um, so that their boards and executive managers uh, must define their responsibilities regarding the open finance services that they will provide. Um, also, we have um, requests from the companies and the banks uh, to uh, document and uh, establish the open finance service policy. So by this policy, they can define uh, the main uh, security controls and uh, the main services that they will uh, allow uh, to provide the main uh, open finance services and um, also they can uh, decide uh, the basis of the third party provider that they can contract with. So this policies determine um, and covers all security elements related to the open finance services and the services that they can make it available in their uh, institution. The next slide. Also, in, in the risk management uh, topic, uh, we ask all companies and banks uh, to identify and manage and monitor any risk related to providing the open finance services uh, and any risk that can result from contracting with the third party provider. Such risks can be security risk, operational um, uh, operational also operational risk and to contain uh, these risks in the uh, comprehensive uh, whole assessment uh, uh, risk of the uh, company or of the fin or uh, the financial institution uh, also uh, we have concerns in our in our uh, instructions about contracting with a third party provider so uh, the companies and the banks are asked to uh, uh, have uh, some considerations about uh, contracting with the third party provider. So uh, in that contract, they must uh, define their responsibilities uh, with the third party provider and uh, they must have an uh, audit um, uh, on the third party provider and uh, other considerations that they must uh, have in their contract with the third party provider. Okay, the next slide. Also in the instructions, we have requirements uh, about uh, the application programming interface. We didn't define any standard, uh, specific standards about the APIs, but we have uh, uh, put uh, the securities and technical requirements of the APIs that uh, will be used um, in, the, in promoting the open finance services. Uh, also, we have defined the third party provider uh, standards and the requirements uh, such as due diligence procedures. Um, uh, banks and uh, PSPs are asked to have these procedures in order to identify the identity of the third party providers and um, uh, according to their, uh, their risks uh, management uh, plans and the risk management profile that uh, may raise from contract with the third party providers. The next slide. Also, we um, request from the banks and the payment companies uh, to define the security and technical standards for providing the open finance services, such as uh, open API standards and the data standards, such as the data formats, and to define also the security standard. And, uh, uh, sure, we have uh, taken into our con uh, considerations the consumer protection requirements and the data privacy and data protection requirements in our um, instruction to balance between uh, promoting innovation in the open finance uh, field and uh, the consumer protection and the data privacy and data protection of uh, these uh, services. Um, this is uh, my presentation about just uh, a brief overview of uh, our regulations regarding open finance services 
and thank you all for your time and uh, thank you for listening to this uh, presentation and uh, i'm ready now for any comments questions thank you thank you bara thank you bara for this uh, updates actually about uh, the progress in api when they are ready from lara alhamud Bara Aludas. Hello. No, Bara, she's not with us. Uh, it seems that she left. Uh, she, you, are, you are muted, Bara, Munkin. Bara, you are muted. If you are still with us, you are muted. Anyhow, uh, Abdullah, if you have the final remarks until Bara join, rejoin us. Maybe I can answer the question for the process okay. for the, okay. starting the, okay. for the dialogue. Uh, uh, it depends on the relationship between the TPP and the bank. Actually, if you are if you came to the bank through join as a incubator, we can help uh, the uh, startups. We uh, the companies with that to start the dialogue with the banks and we can help them help them even with the connectivity as Jopac as a switch uh, or uh, the the APIs um, and also the TPPs and the startups can go directly to the bank and um, initiate the conversation, sign the agreement, inform Central Bank of Jordan, and the connectivity is up. You can start the connectivity process with them yeah. based on their requirements. But for, from Joe Pack side, we are trying to standardize the connectivity process, security requirements, and all of that. So it might be easier for the uh, TPPs and the startups to uh, uh, join us in join. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you, everyone, for thank you. Uh, thank you for having us, and thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Actually, I will take this chance to to thank our uh, guests, speakers, panelists, and audience who have uh, been with us for the ten minutes, less than two hours, actually, one hour and fifty minutes of being with us in this uh, session. Uh, I, we would be happy actually to communicate later if the, you have a question to contact us and through the communication challenge that we uh, channels that we already shared with you uh, in our emails. Uh, so if there is no uh, other input, I would uh, conclude here and see that our open finance, uh, let's say uh, open banking, I think it's the future of the financial industry where it's going to reach to everyone, to give the accessibility to financial services. And I know that any new, uh, and everyone knows that any new uh, field or any like financial technology, there are some risks. On the same time, there are opportunities. And with this word, I think I would conclude our session and uh, looking forward and reminding you that we will have uh, other five sessions within the coming weeks. So uh, stay tuned and join us in our coming session about customer authentication. Um, thank you for being with us today and looking forward to see you in the coming sessions webinars. Yeah. There's yeah, a still a small um, add-on. Um, you can find the link, uh, a link for an evaluation in the meeting chat. And that's the most convenient way to just give us a feedback. How interesting was the webinar for you? Um, and uh, the contents and uh, please just click on that. It's a very short um, poll. It's a very short uh, evaluation. Doesn't take much time and um, helps us uh, to improve um, the session contents. Thank you very much. Over to you, Ziad. You're muted, Ziad, sorry. Uh, thank you, Branko, actually, for your uh, information. I will take this chance to say to everyone because tomorrow we're starting our vacation and our uh, Eid holiday. And uh, looking forward to see you in our coming webinar after the Eid, inshallah, on 19th of July. Thank you, everyone. Looking forward to see you again. Bye.